So to say they are critical is an understatement. In fact, most doctors today are saying about 80% of chronic degenerative disease comes from where? An imbalance in the gut. So now we've got food heading downstream. We don't have enough healthy bacteria to digest it. Bad guys start to take over in here. And who are the bad guys? Predominantly yeast. Some of you might have heard the term candida. Well, this is what starts to happen. Now, candida starts to grow. Can yeast digest food? No, not very well. So what happens next? Food passes into the intestines. Anybody ever experienced that, oh man, I feel bloaty, I feel gassy, I don't know why. Well, some of the reason can be simply that you're not digesting food properly. So what's it doing as it heads downstream? It's literally rotting, right? It's fermenting, so it's producing gas. So now we've got a big blob of food heading down, hasn't really been digested. What is your body forced to do? It goes, hey, wait a second here. I can't let this just go through the system. So eventually this food comes across your pancreas. What's your pancreas job normally? Normally your pancreas sits downstream and it says, okay, all the food's been digested by the bacteria up top. And so the, the pancreas goes, right? Pumps out a little bit of insulin. When it sees an undigested mess coming at it, what's your pancreas have to do now? Now it goes, right? It's pumping out insulin like crazy. Now, if your pancreas is pumping out a bunch of insulin, what's the problem with that? Well, lots of insulin flooding into the system. Well, there's a couple problems with that. One is insulin is a powerful what? Fat storage hormone. Now, by the way, this process is pretty stressful to the body, right? If your gut's not working properly. So your body also secretes another hormone called what? Cortisol, another powerful fat storage hormone. Most people these days from this, from mental stresses, all the things that go on, are in fat storage mode. Their hormones are fat storage dominant. And what we try to do is we go, okay, well, I'm going to fix this problem by doing what? I'm going to try to get fat burning mode going. So we try to exercise and eat right. And I'll explain to you in a minute why that doesn't work. So the food's heading downstream. The body's pumping out insulin. If you're constantly pumping out more insulin than you should be, what do you suppose happens in the long run? How well is your pancreas going to function long term? Well, eventually it starts to wear out. But high insulin in the body also does what? Well, the cells in the body become something called what? Insulin resistant. This is where we start getting drugs like metformin and glucophagin. I'm not going to get too into that, other than to say an imbalance in the gut will cause ultimately lots of insulin. Insulin's a fat storage hormone. If you don't get this right, it becomes really difficult to lose any kind of weight. But it gets worse. So ultimately, this food still passes down. It's a little more broken up than it would have been. But where does ultimately all this food have to get to? Ultimately, it's got to get to your bloodstream, right? Now, here's a problem. If it's not digested completely, and you've got all sorts of bad little organisms in here, yeast actually grow roots and can penetrate through here, what ends up happening? Exactly. Now, instead of this little tiny capillary and trying to get digested food through, the body is literally starts to leak chunks of food through the blood. And as these chunks end up in your bloodstream, do you suppose your body likes that? Now, chunks is relative. We're not talking about a French fry in there. But your body looks at this and goes, oh, no. What do I do now? It hates that. So it activates who? Your immune system. Who is your immune system attacking at this point? Yourself, right? So if your immune system is attacking you, what do we call that? autoimmune disease. Back in the 50s, there were eight or so major autoimmune diseases. You know how many there are today? Over 80 autoimmune diseases. Now, this is linked into a lot of other things. If your immune system is always attacking you because of maybe decisions you made, maybe a few rounds of antibiotics somewhere in your life would start to kill off the healthy bacteria. I mean, you could have had antibiotics when you're a kid and not know that they can set you up for a lifetime of problems with your whole digestive system, weight gain. So now what does your body do? It's constantly at war against you. So then you add things like mold from a peanut. I mean, I'm old enough to remember, like when I grew up, I never heard of peanut allergies. I never had a friend who could die from eating a peanut. But I have four kids, and I'll tell you, all the events that we do, at the bottom of any email we get for some kind of thing, it's like, this is a nut-free event. It's a gluten-free event. It's a sugar-free event. I mean, you get to the point where it's like it's a fun-free event at this point. And so why do I say that? I don't mean to make light of it. But at the end of the day, if your body is always on a heightened state of alert, this is where allergies come from, or many of them. I'm not going to say all of them. But now the body is sitting here dealing with this constantly. It creates inflammation. What does inflammation lead to? 
pretty much any major disease you could think of these days, its roots are somewhere in inflammation, right? Heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, they're saying now, all of these things. In fact, Time Magazine, they had an entire, an entire issue dedicated just to the effects of inflammation in the body. So ultimately, what's the point of all this? 